Now, I'm still old enough to remember a time where we had uh, these type of uh, televisions with the bunny ears. And you know that to get a channel, you have to actually move the antennas to get that signal, that channel to come through the television. It's exactly the same as the human being. The human being has to move their arms to get the right tuning or vibration. So when you move your arms around, uh, you're actually tuning to what frequency enters the body. And when you hold a posture in a specific geometry, what you're doing is you're building an electromagnetic structure around the body in that frequency range. So you're building electromagnetic fields using the physical form. And uh, this is the whole concept of Qigong and the whole concept of the Egyptian postures is that by doing specific postures in a specific order, what you're doing is you're building an electromagnetic structure around your body um, in a specific order for a specific purpose. And this is another um, reflection of um, geometry, which is a crystal. And if you know radios or walkie talkies or even computer chips, um, you have to cut the crystal in a very specific geometry in a very specific angle. And if you have two crystals that are exactly the same, the same cut and geometry, those two crystals now speak to each other. They communicate with one another because they're in resonance with one another. So for example, uh, a walkie talkie channel has two crystals that are cut the same way. So when you're on that channel, you can now communicate between the walkie talkies. And it's the same thing with the human body. When we enter into a specific geometry, we can communicate with an energy system, just like a cut crystal. So this is called uh, Fa Chi, generating the energy ball. And it really starts with the breath. Okay, we have to learn how to breathe again. Um, and it's the way that a baby breathes. For example, if you ever watched a baby breathe, they breathe with their stomach. So their stomach pushes out and then a stomach pushes in with each breath. And um, as we grow older, we breathe with our uh, chest. And when we're stressed or in panic, we breathe very high up in our chest. So what we want to do is we want to drop the breath right down to the stomach area, to the area right behind the um, um, belly button area. So you want to focus your mind really behind your belly button. And we can call that, or we do call that the Dan Tian in Qigong. And what you do is you slowly inhale with your nose. And as you inhale, your mind follows the breath down into the stomach. Let me see if I got this. There we go. So if you could see this diagram, for example, it's almost like you breathe and follow your mind down into the stomach and you push your stomach out. Some people breathe out through their mouth to exhale. For me, I do both through the nose. So I inhale through the nose, push the stomach out, exhale through the nose, push the stomach in. And that's what I do first. I first do a meditation of just focusing on this type of breathing. That is the most important point of this whole thing. You focus on that breathing. And then what you do is you bring your hands together like this, like you're holding a ball in front of you. And as you're breathing, you can start to feel the energy between your hands. It feels like an electromagnetic field or something pushing your hands apart. Now, um, do you remember, uh, let me say this, you remember Karate Kid, the movie Karate Kid with uh, Mr. Miyagi and, uh, uh, for example, when, when Daniel got hurt and he had to heal Daniel. <laughs> What did he do? He goes, Miyagi, heal. And he put his hands together and he starts really kind of um, rubbing his hands together. And then he put his hands 
um, on uh, the injured part of the body and the person was healed. Now, energy follows circulation. This was another law of Qigong. Energy follows circulation, which is the circulatory system. It follows blood. So blood is very, very important. It's high in iron content. So it has this connection to energy in the electromagnetic field. So when you shake your hands, for example, if you shake your hands, what you're doing is you're bringing blood to your hands. So you're sensitizing your hands with blood circulation. When you slap your hands, when you rub your hands, you're opening up microcirculation in your hands. You're bringing this blood flow into your hands. And when you do that, you actually bring energy, actual ka energy into your hands. And so once you feel that, once you get the circulation going, the blood going, then you start to meditate with the breath and you start to build this energy. And people meditate like this, just, just doing this. People can meditate like this for uh, 10 to 20 minutes a day. And they'll be building this ball of energy, this ball of chi. And you can use it for your own um, healing or spiritual growth. Or if you have a pain, you can just take it and put it right on the body and work with it like this. Or chakras or any other thing. Or you could take it and place it on a plant, your... Uh, fish, <laughs> animals, uh, even um, clients, if you are that do that type of healing. So it first starts out with this breath, this flow. And as you breathe, the stomach area starts to become very hot. And that's what you want to feel. You want to feel the, the heat, which is this circulation moving into the solar plexus and stomach area. It's all about circulation. It's all about blood flow and opening up those areas using the breath, the mind, and the circulation of the blood in the body. And we can move it using our intentions and our minds. And um, this is also a mudra. You know, we see this a lot in many different art forms. We see these two fingers. You see it in paintings of Jesus. You see it in paintings of Baphomet. You see it in, in all over the world and in different religious circles, you'll see somebody like this pointing. And in Egypt, they called it the fingers of Horus. And when you put your hands in a mudra like this, it means the director of Ka. That's what it means. You're directing energy. It's almost like a, a laser pointer. So you're, when you point, energy comes out of the fingers like this. So you have this type of connection to an energy that comes out. So uh, when you see this, you have it means really connection or director of energy is what this mudra uh, means. And you can actually take this and go to your chakras and practice with your breathing until you could actually feel that pressure, that laser, that energy hitting your hand and when you do it, you can actually move your chakras. You can move the energy going through the meridian systems just by using this type of mudra. So I'd like to run through this. And uh, because I can't, because this is a video, I can't really stand up and do the postures with you. I'm going to go through them like this. Um, so if you wanted to like uh, screenshot uh, or take a picture of these postures so you remember them. Uh, this is what the Egyptian Postures book is. And uh, like, if you want to just take a picture of this so you know the postures. So basically, the first posture is you put the left foot forward. And you will see in all the Egyptian uh, photographs and um, paintings and artwork statues, their left foot is forward you will rarely see one with the right foot forward. It's mostly the left foot. And when you put your left foot forward, it was called the left foot of Ra. And the left foot of Ra means your connection. Okay? You're connecting out into the universe. So as your left foot's forward, it means you're connecting out to your outer world and you're bringing the universal flow through your body using your left foot forward. That's what the posture of the left foot is. 
And then the first posture is you bring the hands up to about 90 degrees at the elbows in a fist. And the fist is not like a punching fist. It's just like a very light fist. You're not really putting any pressure. It's just very light. And you're holding in a 90 degree ang angle. Called, and this posture is called the energy connector and grounder. And when you stand in this pose, what happens is, is that you're starting to open your energy field up to connect to the, the environment around you. And it starts to open up your entire energy system. It brings the energy down the meridians, opens up the channels through the feet, and you start to get this type of um, connection, this activation of the energy channels right through the body. So this is why we start using this posture. And from here, we go right into, we call it the rainbow arc. And basically what you're doing is you're just slowly lifting the arm up to the shoulder and down to the side. And what this does is it starts to move the energies through um, the entire body using the polarities. So we have two polarities in the body, positive, negative, male, female, whatever you want to call it, just the two polarities. And uh, when we start to build these two polarities, we start to balance the polarities of the body and we join the polarities of the body, which creates this power, this activation. And the next is called the heart pulser, which is, you know, you put your hands like crossed over your heart like this. And what this does is it builds and opens the energy around the heart chakra. And then you open your hands over the heart like this. So there's, you know, two different polarities, like always, which is the building, sending, receiving, building, sending, receiving. It opens the heart chakra and uh, it brings a lot of healing energy to the heart. But also remember the heart is your connection to the universe. So this is a very, very important uh, energy center of the body that you really want to be activated and open to have that flow through us. And then from here, we go into this rainbow arc two, which is the same as rainbow arc one, but now we just bring the hand up to about the ear and we switch and repeat. And what we're doing here is we're still working with the two polarities of the body, but we're working on the upper channels to receive spiritual information and energy and it's strengthening our connection to what the shamans call the upper world or the world of uh, the, the energies of your higher self. And the next is the wings of the king, which your hands are like this. And basically you push one hand out to the side and as it comes back, you push the other hand, just like this. And this is very good for uh, working in the dream state. So for like astral traveling or even uh, greater recall of your dreams, it works with the spiritual and psychic levels of consciousness. And it's really good for actually clearing um, cellular memory, physical memory. It, it just helps rejuvenate and clear cell, the cellular memory of the body called wings of the king. And then uh, this is a very um, popular, um, well, you'll, you'll see this basic, this posture basically all over the world, which is called the salute to the sun. You're putting your hands up to the sky. And when you stand like this, just like the Qigong image I showed you earlier, you're pulling down that positive ionization. You're pulling down that upper energy and you're bringing the energy up through your feet of the earth and the mixing you know, the mixing, the combination of these two energies create this power that runs through your body. And that power, uh, it transforms uh, the energy of your entire body and system. And then from the salute to the sun, you go to the disc of the sun. And above us, above our heads, we call it the higher chakras. And there's this sphere, this higher chakra above us that we call a solar disc. Some people call it the higher self, higher chakras. And what you can actually do is hold this chakra, this sun disc above your head, 
And what's really good about this chakra is you can actually pull it down. So you can actually take that and pull it down through the front of your body. And by pulling that chakra down through your channels, you take that fire energy of the solar disk and you're purifying and awakening the chakra system of your body. And then the next is called the uh, water balancer. And basically you have one hand facing forward and one hand facing the earth and you switch and repeat. And what this does is it works with the element of the water of the body and you know, we're mostly water and water holds memory. So as we're doing this, we're charging the water molecules of our body and we're releasing that memory of the water to have a very, uh, to have a new charge, to have a new sacred geometry structure and connection of that water throughout the body and the organs. And then we come to the solar ball, which is just, we put our hands in front of our body to hold this ball, basically this huge ball. Think of it like a, uh, what is it, like a beach ball. Think of it like a, you're holding a giant beach ball in front of your body. And when you stand like this, what you're doing is you're building this healing energy through the body. You're building this ka energy. And they call, in Qigong, they call it filling the bucket. When you stand like this, and you may go to a park and see someone doing Qigong, and they'll just be doing this. They'll just be standing in this posture, building this solar ball energy around them. And then what you do is you take the solar ball and you bring it into your stomach. So you'd like take your hands and you bring it into your stomach, but you don't touch. So you keep like a distance like this in front of your stomach. And when you do that and bring the solar ball into your solar plexus, it takes this healing energy and it goes up the body and down the body. So you send that healing energy right through the entire body doing this. And then this is called the pillars of earth. Um, this is a very important posture because you're releasing energy. This is a posture of releasing energy. And what you're actually doing is you take your feet, you bring them back together so that you're grounding yourself into the earth in a different formation. And as you rotate your palms, you're rotating your palms to the earth. And by doing this, you're taking any excess energy that you've built up, any negative energy, and you're sending it back to the earth to be healed. And the earth actually sends a current of energy back up through your feet. So you get this kind of energetic cycle or torus going to refresh your energy system. And the next posture is it's a little more complicated. It's called the Kundalini Cobra. And basically you put your left hand in front of your solar plexus and your right hand behind, um, I would say, uh, your, your sacral chakra. And you move, as your left hand goes up, the right hand goes down. So when your left hand goes down, your right hand goes up. And it's not a big movement. You, you're the, the, your hand faces your spine. And as it goes up, it basically goes from the root chakra to the second chakra. It doesn't really go that big of a movement. But whereas the front, it goes basically from the root chakra to about the chin area is basically as high as you need to go. And this opens up the channels of the Kundalini to flow, this fire energy that goes through the body. And then um, you do this about eight times. And then you come back to your solar plexus and you move your hands in and out. Hold on a second. I see some questions here or comments. Okay, it looks like your heel of your right foot is raised and you are standing on the ball of your foot. No, um, my feet are actually both flat on the ground. Everything is flat on the ground. Um, yes, the pictures look like I'm flying through space. <laughs> and basically when you do the Kundalini Cobra, when you finish that uh, combination of going up and down and in and out, 
uh, what you do is um, you switch your hands. So now you put the right hand in front, go up and down with the left hand behind. And um, I think what I'm gonna have uh, Neil do, and yeah, the hand is facing towards the back. So the palm faces the spine behind. Uh, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna email um, Neil the actual video of me doing this so that each one of you can see me doing this in a, in a live video. So you could have this just, you know, for your own private use, don't post it on social media, just for you, okay? That's, that's a extra thing that you guys are gonna get for taking this uh, uh, workshop online, okay? I hope that helps. All right. Oh wait, I just see more. Yeah, everybody's gonna get the videos. So yeah, I want all of you to learn this. And another thing is that uh, everybody says, uh, this is like my Qigong system. There's no such thing, all right? We all move in the same way all around the world. We're all human and this is how energy moves. These postures have been practiced for countless thousands of years. There is no person in the world that can put their name in front of this and says, when you hold your hand like this, this is my posture. There's no such thing. So that's, that's why we can share this and talk about this, but all right, hold on. How do we get forward here? Here we go. So the next one is called the Cobra Sways. And basically you take your feet, you move them shoulder width apart. You put your hands facing the earth and you're like gently swaying. Like a, it is like a cobra actually. Like you're just gently swaying in a circle. And first you go clockwise about six to eight times. You stop and then you put your hands down. Then you pick your hands back up. And then you go counterclockwise again because you're creating this energetic sphere, this energetic bubble around your body that um, actually starts to purify your energies and it purifies the energies of your environment. So it's a good uh, protector and balancer posture is this one. And then what we do is, uh, this is the conclusion of it. And basically we go back to salute to the sun. We go into a prayer posture above our heads. We open our palms to hold the disc of the sun above our heads. And we say a mantra and the mantra that we say is ra ha and what this mantra means is it actually means to organize our energy and to hold our energy in protection that's basically what ra ha uh, means as a mantra so that's basically what we're saying is to organize our energy to keep our energies organized and in highest protection and that's our uh, intention when we say this mantra raha three times holding the disc of the sun and we take it into prayer posture over our hearts and usually when i do this i say like a prayer i usually give thanks to the energies that i've received energies that i've released and thank the universe for assisting me um, in my journey and also can i carry or continue to carry this energy forward in my journey. And then what I do is I put my hands from here to here and I put it over my heart. And when you do this, you seal the energy field. So what you're doing is you're taking the energy that you've just created and you seal it within it. Now you carry that energy around your body. Let me see here for a second here. All right, now, that was the salute to the sun. And I, you will get the video. So everybody that signed up will get the video. Uh, so you can practice it yourself using, uh, a, I'll send a private link from YouTube. Um, so if there is any questions now, you guys could click on the uh, Q&A. And, &A. and I'm, opening, I'm open to answer basically anything you want. Uh, it could be about this subject, it could be something completely random, and I could do my best to uh, answer them for you. And I hope it was, wasn't 
an overload of information, but something useful that you could use and take with you on your journey. Neil, are you there? Oh, oh yes, okay. So um, these, um, these exercises can be done outside, absolutely. Um, I live in Canada though, which is very cold outside a lot, most of the year. And then when it's warm outside, um, there's a lot of mosquitoes. So I tend to practice exclusively indoors and that is perfect for me. <laughs> um, here's a question. You mentioned the Pleiades and I'm wondering if Sirius had anything to do with this at all. Um, from my information, um, from an Atlantean times, there was different star nations that were connected. And this was the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Octurians. Um, who else was there? Um, I, it was about seven. There was like seven different star nations that was in open communication with the Atlantean priests that would receive information back and forth. But from the information I've received, it was that it was very specifically the Pleiadians that uh, designed this type of uh, system to, for the Atlanteans. Um, is it better to do barefoot? It's not necessary. It's, to have your feet on the ground is very good, but um, it's not 100% necessary. Um, this is the best class I have ever taken. You are a great teacher and presenter. Thank you for your information. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. And, um, but if you are on a beach, um, you know, a nice beach, not like you're gonna step on glass or anything, <laughs> but if you're on like a good beach or even a normal forest, um, you could try to take your shoes off, but like I said, you're still walking through the electromagnetic fields of the earth, so it's not 100% necessary unless you really want that connection. Uh, Maropi from Calgary uh, said it's a wonderful practice, but she got very dizzy doing this. Is that normal? And actually, I've heard this quite a bit from many people. And when you start to do this energetic work, um, it does rile things up in you. And everybody is different. Okay, nobody is going to have nobody's going to have the exact same experience. But what I would do is Maropi, um, be very gentle. Be very gentle with yourself and know yourself. You know yourself better than anybody else. And when you're doing Qigong, for example, you do not want to stress your body. You wanna be as relaxed as possible because when you're in stress, stress shuts your body off from the energy flow, all right? So it's better to be completely relaxed to allow the energy to come through than to stress your body out with a hard movement. So if you start to feel dizzy, um, I would stop and I would drink more water and I would just do it slower and I would do it um, with less stress. Mm -hmm.